Okay, let's get started. First, let's use the rectangle tool and create a shape the same as the size of your canvas. In this project, I'm working on a 1920 by 1080 frame. Here, let's change the color of the rectangle. Let's change it to black. For you to see the settings, you should open the Essential Graphics panel. Let's go to Window and select Essential Graphics. And then the next step is to create three more rectangle shapes. Make sure to select the graphic that you created, the rectangle. And then from there, click this icon, New Layer, and then select Rectangle. From there, you can change the size of the shape. Let's make this 1000 for the height. Let's change it to 700. I think that's okay. For the corners, let's make it a rounded corner. Change that to 80. We can see the shape, the color is black. Let's change it to bright green. So there. Let's now center the shape. From the align, let's choose the align center and vertically. For us not to be confused, let's change the names. For the shape one, let's change that to background. For the shape two, change the name to middle shape. What we're going to do next is create two more shapes. Select that, control C, control V. Let's change the name to bottom bottom shape and let's adjust the position of that put it below create another shape for the upper part Control c and Control v and let's change the name to top shape drag that above here i'm using the settings here in the essential graphics panel for the position so as you can see we only have one graphics instead of having a lot of layers and then now we're going to add a ultra key effect for us to have the frame ultra key let's add that go to effects control panel and let's select the bright green so we'll have the frame by the way i'm using a plugin here it's a paid plugin from effects seeker i'll leave a link below so you can try it it's like a effects console plugin but this one is for premiere pro let's drag an image below i have a ai generated image here now we can see the frame let's resize the image using the effect control panel reduce the scale that's enough let's reposition it and duplicate the image so we will have the one on top and the one below let's put this one below first and put one more above let's go back to the essential graphics panel we can stylize this more by adding the gaussian blur to the graphics adjust the blurriness to around 10. the sides became blurry and it made the frame look more vintage so i think the bottom shape needs to be adjusted let's position it lower by the way it's important for the effect stacking in the essential graphics right now the gaussian blur is above if you want to just apply it to the shapes like the frame you can drag it below because we're going to add another graphic to stylize it let's go back to the essential graphics panel click the new layer icon and then select from file and then let's find a good retro film frame right here i selected this one we can see it because i think it's too large let's adjust the size of it i selected the png film frame let's adjust the scale so we can see let's adjust the opacity that around 20 then like what i've said the effects stacking is important because if you place the gaussian blur on top the film frame will also be blurry but if you want that effect that's okay but for now let's just apply the gaussian blur to the shapes to make this template even more realistic we're going to add a slow shake to it in the effect controls let's make a keyframe for the position let's skip to 15 frames change the position to a bit right and down or up <laughs> skip again to 15 frames then left and down let's see the motion so we have this slow smooth shake and let's copy that and to add more retro look we're going to apply an overlay 
drag the film burn and dust overlay here. All right, now we can see it because we have to change the blend mode to lighten or screen. It depends. So I think the screen looks much better. Let's see the effect. Okay, and we're done. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more content.